So today we're going to look at how we can use the periodic table to help us to figure out the numbers of the three subatomic particles in the atom. So the three little parts that make up every single atom. So first of all, we've got our positive protons. And you can see here it's got this little cross on it, this little plus sign, to show us that it is positively charged. And then we've got our neutrons, and that one doesn't have a plus and it doesn't have a minus, because it doesn't have a charge. We just say that it is neutral. And then these guys are both quite big, but the electrons are actually really, really small. And even this picture that I've drawn here is way too big to be an electron. So in terms of its mass, in terms of how heavy it is, it's actually about a two thousandth of the size of these two. OK, but you see it has this little negative charge here. And even though it's really small, even though it has a really small mass, that negative charge is big enough to cancel out the whole of this positive proton. These two are just going to cancel each other right out. Now we've got a little key up here and the reason that that key is there is that that key is the same one you are going to have in your GCSE science exam. So in your chemistry exams you're going to have this periodic table and it has got this key right here. So if we get confused, if we forget what we're doing, we can always look right there at that key and it's going to give us some clues. So I've taken an atom here and today I've picked lithium. And if we just take this little picture of an atom here for us to have a play with, we're going to fill in some blanks. So it says up here that the number at the bottom is the atomic number or the proton number. Now that's going to give me a big clue of where to start because it'll probably come as no surprise to you to hear that if the proton number is three, that means we have three protons. So I'm going to take those three protons and I'm going to put them right here in this nucleus. Now, in reality, the nucleus is actually pretty small, but we're doing it big here just to make it a little bit easier for us to see. So right in the middle of that nucleus, we've got these three positive protons. Now, it says up here that the relative atomic mass is the number at the top, this seven here. And we already mentioned that those electrons are really tiny. They have such a tiny mass. We're not even going to bother about them. So basically what we're saying is that how much the atom weighs, how big its mass is, is just going to be decided by the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So what this seven tells me is that there are seven things right here in the nucleus. And I already know what three of them are because this proton number here was three. So if I want to figure out how many neutrons to add, I just have to figure out how many is it going to be to take this up to seven. So if I add in one, two, three, four, I've now got seven things in total here. And I've done that by adding four neutrons. So here I'm going to write myself a little sum just in case I forget a little bit later when it gets a bit harder. I'm just going to say that I did seven take away three. So there's seven from here and there's three from here. And that gave me a total of four neutrons. Now, one of the cool things about an atom is that even though it's made of charged particles, even though it's made of these positive protons and these negative electrons, overall, it has no charge itself. So the electrons and the protons, they balance right out. So we know that if we've got three protons here, three positive things, and we do know that because it tells us right here, then in this atom, in this uncharged particle, we need three negative things to balance them out. And the only negative things we have are electrons. So I'm going to have three of them as well. Now, we'll worry in the next video about how exactly I know where to put them. But I'm going to put two in that first shell. And then the third one is going to go out here. And I should probably say that this shell is not a physical thing that you can touch. It's kind of like a planet's orbit. So in the same way that the Earth goes round the sun and round the sun... And you know kind of where it's going to go, but there isn't like a train track that you can put your hand on and touch. Um, this shell, which you might also hear called an orbit or an energy level, it's not a physical thing inside the atom in the way that the protons and the neutrons and the electrons are. It's not made of matter. It's just an imaginary line that tells us where we can expect to find those electrons. OK, so we've done that one. We know that lithium has got three protons, which I got from here. And then it's got three electrons, because if it's got three protons, it needs three electrons to be balanced. 
And then it's got four neutrons because overall the mass must be seven from here. And we know that three of those are protons and neutrons are all we've got left. OK, so let's have a look at one little more example. Let's look at boron. So we're going to do exactly the same thing we did before. We're going to start with our atomic number or our proton number. So if our proton number is five, that means that we have five protons. Nice and straightforward. So we're going to put those five protons right in the nucleus where we put them before. And it's going to get a little bit crowded in here. And maybe I'm going to wish I'd made it a bit bigger, but there we go. OK, five protons in there. And then we're going to look at the mass. We're going to look at the fact that this atom has a mass of 11. It weighs 11. And since the protons have a mass of one and the neutrons have a mass of one, uh, I'm just going to add things until I get to 11. So I've got uh, one neutron, two neutrons, three, four, five and six neutrons. Uh, and really, I should have these kind of spaced out a little bit so that they're um, breaking up those protons because they don't want to be all together like that. But we won't worry too much for now. So uh, for my neutrons, I did 11 take away five and that meant I needed to add six neutrons. So I've got 11 things in total here in my nucleus because the mass is 11. And then I need to think about these electrons. I've got five protons in the nucleus and those five positive charges need counteracting by five negative charges. So again, we'll look at this in the next video, how I decide where to put them. But we're going to put two electrons in my first shell and then We've got another three to worry about. So we will put a three in my outer shell there. And that is how you are going to figure out the number of subatomic particles in the atom.